Wendy and Matt Sweezy know firsthand how to deal with a baby with hiccups. Their six-month-old son, Wyatt, has had hiccups off and on since well before he was born. When we came home from the hospital, it seemed, uh, it seemed he would have the hiccups on a daily basis. And sometimes 10, 15 minutes, other times I've, we saw him hiccup from one feeding to the next feeding. Even though hiccups are not dangerous to an infant, they can still be upsetting, more so for the parents than the baby. It made me feel very uncomfortable when Wyatt would get hiccups. Uh, I, there was nothing that I could do but just sit there and watch his little tiny body shake and it was very disturbing for me. Um, I would sit up for hours and watch him while he slept with hiccups because, you know, as a new mother, I didn't know if he could choke or, or something because he, he got them quite frequently. The question is, are they dangerous? And the answer is no. Are they annoying? Yes. Are they frightening? Generally, no, unless they lead to uh, the baby spitting up or throwing up and then, then it becomes somewhat annoying rather than anything that is dangerous. In adults and children alike, hiccups are caused by frequent involuntary contractions of the diaphragm muscle that sits below the lungs. What causes these contractions? Nobody's really sure, but there are a whole host of theories, including eating too much, too fast, drinking carbonated beverages, swallowing air, being startled, feeling stressed, and even falling ill. If your baby is bottle fed, you should also check the nipple on your bottle. A baby may swallow too much air and hiccup if the hole in the nipple is the wrong size. When you turn the bottle upside down, you should get a drip, drip, drip of formula that gradually stops. As a further precaution, some pediatricians suggest using bottles that have disposable plastic liners, which allow you to squeeze the air out before feeding. They also collapse as the baby drinks, helping to lessen the intake of air, which can cause painful gas. Practicing good burping techniques can also help infants who get hiccups frequently. The first and most common way to burp a baby is by holding him upright with his head on your shoulder. While supporting his head and back with one hand, you gently pat his back with the other. A second technique is to sit the baby on your lap, supporting his chest and head with one hand while patting his back with the other. A third technique is to lay the baby on his stomach on your lap. While supporting his head so it's slightly higher than his chest, you gently pat or rotate your hand on his back. Regardless of which technique you're using, always make sure to burp your infant after every meal, even if it takes a while to get the air up. It may be time consuming and a bit frustrating, but it will help prevent hiccups and lessen the chance of your baby spitting up. I do burp Wyatt after every meal, and I am religious about keeping him up for 20 minutes because he was a spitter when he was a newborn and the doctor recommended that we keep him up for 20 minutes after each feeding. And uh, even though he's a little bit older, I still do that. Every baby is somewhat different and the need to burp gets less as time goes on because babies learn to swallow and suck appropriately and know that when they begin to swallow and suck, they can take these little breaths which allow them the, the amount of air that is necessary for oxygenation. And that changes as babies go on. And that is, that is why uh, what is present at age 10 days is not going to be the same that's at uh, three or four weeks of age. Even baby Wyatt is starting to come around. Now that Wyatt is a little over six months, I have found that uh, the hiccups have reduced a lot. As babies grow and change, so will their eating habits. When they're introduced to solid foods, for instance, most children will begin experiencing fewer and fewer bouts of hiccuping. And for most children, life will progress smoothly from there, despite the occasional hiccup.